the mandatory you know, discussion group, the one hour session uh, once a week that you are required and expected to attend is now officially over. However, if you would like technical support, I am going to stay online in order to show you really step by step um, everything that you should have done up to today. So if you have any questions, if you have encountered a problem or an issue, if you have um, something that where you have gotten stuck, and you have the time, definitely stay on now. The, now, there are many other ways to get support, but if you would like to uh, receive support now and live uh, where you can ask me questions and you can stop me and ask me to repeat something or go back and explain it, um, then please do stay on. If you need to go or if you're doing just fine, then you are also, you of course, uh, uh, free to go. So let me just um, start with the onboarding page and I'm going to switch my screen to um, the um, to show my browser and in this way you'll be able to see and I'll be able to explain. So if there is anyone in the room who um, you know and uh, of course if you need to go feel free to yes uh, uh, for, feel free to go and bye bye uh, Ananya and uh, others um, who are just okay. So uh, you should be able to see now my screen with the onboarding instructions. And of course, this is um, these instructions are on this web page in order to because you're not in Scholar yet. And one of the key points is once you are in Scholar, everything happens in Scholar. Um, now there are then there is also go to training and WhatsApp, but those are the three platforms that we'll be using. And really, the main one that you should focus your attention on is uh, Scholar. So first of all. Um, just to answer Ibi Dolapo uh, about who is an accompanist. So accompanists are uh, scholars from a survey scholar or um, other WHO scholar courses who have distinguished themselves by completing a course and for, for the uh, higher level uh, accompanists who have been you know, selected by the course team because they have also distinguished themselves through their subject matter expertise and their performance in the course. So <coughs> 67 of them have volunteered to help you um, in this course and you'll be hearing from them they'll be introducing themselves in the coming weeks and you'll be getting to know them and hopefully they will help you deliver results um, especially if you are struggling or finding it challenging to uh, uh, to go through the um, uh, the course so now um, these onboarding instructions um, first my first question is um, is there anybody who is still having issues or problems with onboarding? If so, if you could type into the chat, um, I have a problem or, you know, please help. Um, and then I'll unmute your microphone and that way you can tell me about the problem you're having and we can see what it takes to fix it. All right. Uh, so how does how would one choose a project or will it be assigned by the team? So it'll be assigned by the team, George. Um, so how do you raise your hand? That's a good question. Let me first lower everyone's hands. That way I don't get confused by people who are holding their hand up for something else from, for the, from the discussion group. Um, so you will see where you have the participants um, uh, panel. So in the GoToTraining configuration panel, which is the thing that sits on the far right or far left of your, um, uh, of your screen, you'll see a participants panel and that's where you see the uh, hand raised. Uh, the hand raised icon. So Munir Saleh Sul, let's um, uh, let's let's figure out, let's see what's happening uh, with you. Munir, how are you doing and what is the problem you're facing? I'm being, I, I'm being fine. I, I tried to go through the onboarding process, but unfortunately I, I couldn't reach the, the scholar community, the communities of which I, all the assignment being given to the group, I couldn't get the assignment, and I, can, I didn't do the assignment. So that's my major problem. Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's quickly. So it, there's a simple way to verify if you've made it, if you've actually, if you're actually in the right place. Um, yep. So. Um, so yeah. sorry, Reda. You see what, what actually happened? I went through all the process, but unfortunately, at the end of the process, that it shows me that. Uh, are you a robot? Are you a robot or what? So I tried to click and erase all the information that I cited inside the platform, but unfortunately, it fails to to be to be to be for uh, uh, Okay. Uh, so the first thing I can say is is to reassure you that hmm. you know, um, there are very few cases in which no. 
you know there are you know there there there's such problems uh, can be encountered usually at some point you may have you know missed a step or you know, uh, and so uh, what i can recommend let me just uh, uh, is to get in touch as soon as you can with Dr. Hanna Kelly. So he is, uh, I'm typing in, I'm putting in his okay. uh, WhatsApp number. And, um, okay. Yes. Uh, and so I urge you to, you know, preferably contact him by WhatsApp, explain what's happening. And in most cases, okay. he can solve the problem okay. you're having in under. You know, five minutes. Let's give him ten minutes. To make sure you know, uh, so he can go in fix your account. And if anyone else is having this kind okay. of problem, uh, you, you know, with uh, registration, just you know, uh, contact uh, Hannah, and he will fix it for you. Um, now we see some people sometimes doing you know things sort of misinterpreting instructions. I see here, for example, that we have a new request. So someone who's just joined the, uh, uh, who's just trying now to join the community, perhaps following this. Um, uh, discussion group. Okay, so this is an accompanist, uh, Al Yuso, who is uh, joining. This is, so that's great. Um, so, all right. Thank you, Munir. I hope so. I can't solve your problem right away, but um, you know, definitely do follow okay. up with Hannah, okay. and uh, that should do it. All right. I do okay. want to walk through. Um, so, um, let me see. I saw a couple of questions that were easy to answer. When's the first week assignment going live? So that's on Monday. Yes, uh, to answer Beanish and. Um, and uh, Chukuma. Um, so thank you, Masood, for the kind words. Um, and let's see what else have we got. All right. So let's go back to the onboarding instructions. So the big change, we've actually updated this page um, because, of course, once we made the decision to uh, and recognizing you know the quality of the applicants, um, WHO selected 424 of you, we realized that we would need two discussion groups. And that requires significant effort so, so from, from our side. So we had to make sure we could do it, which is why we left you there a few days when many of, uh, many of you were sending emails and WhatsApp messages saying, I've tried to register for the Wednesday group, but I'm not getting in. Um, you know, now we have the solution, which is here. So if you haven't seen this yet, it's also in the Scholar community in the latest update. Uh, these are the links to um, register for the Jenner weekly discussion group. So if you're in the Thursday discussion group, you're Team Jenner. And if you are in the Wednesday discussion group, which you all were today, then you are Team Pasteur. All right. Um, so do make sure that you, you know, follow up accordingly, that you're registered in one of the two groups. Now, um, if you're absent, what happens? The first thing that happens is that you're removed from the group. OK, we don't you know, because we're at capacity, we don't need people to hold a seat and then uh, actually not show up. And we know some of you have legitimate technical reasons for, for being absent, but still. Um, so here's the process. You'll complete the legitimate absent re request form. So that's a simple form here uh, that you can fill out. You'll view the session recording and then there'll be a catch up task, usually commenting on something that is in the session recording. So basically that's how this works. So basically by ensuring that you attend, that you show up, um, you save yourself a lot of hassle. You save a lot of, you, you save yourself a lot of extra work. And of course, we, you know, we do that because we believe that, you know, the participation is really, really important in the discussion group. There's a lot to be gained. So sure, today we give you a lot of information, but learning to listen to your colleagues, learning to give them feedback, practicing giving them feedback, um, uh, that is a very useful skill. So on the creation of the scholar accounts, I want to draw your attention to the, here what's under important. There's lots. So this is not intuitive. It is you know other platforms. If you know, if you're used to Google or the big you know, or Hotmail or whatever, it's not as quirky as um, this. But these are very simple things. As long as you follow them, um, you will not have any problems. And the scholar platform is extremely reliable. We've never actually lost data or information that somebody has worked on. Most of the problems can be attributed, for example, in the account creation process to people who do not. Um, you know, there are three pieces of information. There's a username that you create and it can be anything. There's an email. Many people have several email accounts. And then there's the password, which of course people notoriously forget about. So uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on the, on the onboarding, but I did want to quickly review this. And of course, here is the first important lesson is that there is a special link which will save you a ton of hassle. So if you look at the community um, by default, 
So is it possible to move the, between the two groups? Asks uh, Junaidu Adamu Barde. Um, so it, we're going to see how many people. So there will be slots opening up in the Pasteur group um, because there were around 30, you know, 30 some uh, people absent. Um, now those slots, you know, if you're quick, you should be able to register for the Pasteur group um, and then you know, secure a seat. What we don't want so much is people hopping back and forth. Do be diligent about which one you attend. You'll also be getting to know the people in a particular team, whether it's Team Jenner or Team Pasteur. So do think about that. Um, so yes, preferably before the designated discussion time, but we know when there's always a few people who have technical difficulties and who can't connect, who are trying to connect and they'll send WhatsApp messages and desperately say, I'm doing everything I can. So in that case, of course, you can fill out the legitimate absence form, uh, after the, uh, uh, the event. And thank you, Kamala Karlashkari for the, uh, kind words. It was really an amazing experience just being here with you all. Hope to learn a lot from you in days to come. We'll be learning from you as well. So, um, so by default, when you you know, check into the community, what do you see? You see a ton of stuff, but let me actually take a step back to do this properly. So I'm gonna use not my administrator account, <coughs> but, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I'm gonna use a, yeah, here we go. Um, a regular user account just like yours now you always you should end up in the last place that you visited uh, in scholar however my advice to you is that you always click when you log in you do this you first click on community and what that does community starts with you so what you see when you click on community is actually your personal profile. In this case, I've given myself the name tutorial course team. You will see your name. How do you know you're in your personal profile? Because there's a yellow bar here. If you're in the community, it's a blue bar. If you're in the, if it's a yellow bar, you're in your personal profile. Now, next week, you're going to post an update. And the first, first caveat, the first pitfall you're going to want to avoid, many people will, by mistake, post their, um, uh, their update on their personal profile. So personal profile is your personal space. If you post your homework there, no one will see it except yourself. So you do not want to do that. The people, the, the, your peers may see it if they visit your personal profile, but the course team certainly won't see it. So where do you actually need to work? Here, when you're here, when you see your name in the left hand, upper left-hand side, you're not in the course yet. The personal profile is, has many benefits, many features that are useful, but not right now. What you want to do is you want to actually go down to your communities. And as you can see, I'm a member of several communities, but the one we're interested in, of course, is module A3. So you click on that. Yes, uh, uh, Abebe, you're right. You only need to involve your, to be involved and participate in one of the discussion groups. The content will be the same. Uh, we're only running two because of this technical limitation of go-to training uh, to, to limited to uh, 200 people. So um, here you are now in the community. How do you know that? Because it says module A3 here. It's module A3 2018. Some of the, you know, if you participated in, in the 2017 module A3 module, you want to make sure you're not trying to do things there. Now, uh, some people see this send a message and say, oh, great. So this is how I send a message for the course. That is not what this is. The send a message button is for sending a private message to the course team, and it is not the best way to reach us. You have WhatsApp and email in this discussion group, so I do not recommend that you try to get in touch with us using the send a message button. So you may be wondering, okay, so how do I participate? Where are my tasks? What am I supposed to do? So if you first try to look at the, the, the activity stream, um, it will be very confusing because the activity con stream contains every activity that anyone in the course is doing okay so, and you can see there's a lot going on here people are starring updates calvin you know, start a bunch of updates then ibidolapo ijarotimi did the same uh you can see things oh here's orientation day two but then all of a sudden we're back at orientation day one carolina star start that update so what is going on how do you make sense of the mess so um you're going to need to filter the activity stream and if you go here, what you want is to filter so that you see just the updates from the course team. But if you go to filter activity and you look here, how can I filter updates? Well, you can filter start updates, but that's not necessarily what you want. You can filter comments, that's kind of useful for filter shares. So it doesn't seem to be in here. And here is the secret or you know, the, the trick uh, I'm going to show you is that 
In order to filter updates, you first need to view updates. So go to that blue bar where, and then in this menu, select updates. Now what that does, it will show you then if in the, in the uh, activity stream, it will show you only the uh, updates. Right now, there are only updates from the course team. So the next step I'm going to show you, you may not see how important it is, but starting on Monday, there will be 300 people posting their own updates in the same space in the course community. So you're definitely at that point going to want and need to do this, which is filter from administrators so that you only see the updates from the administrators, so from the course team. So when you do that, then you see that uh, you can find the orientation day updates and begin to work um, on the course. So again, if you're by default in the activity stream and you go to filter activity, you won't find filter updates by admins. Where is it? There's a preliminary step, which is that you first have to click on updates here, and only then does filter activity become filter updates, and only then, having gone through that step of selecting updates first, can you filter updates from the administrators. All right, so that's kind of, uh, now the good news is that you don't need to go through those tedious steps, those tedious steps each time, which you can easily do is actually grab this bookmark and um, then save the bookmark. So if you don't know, bookmarking is kind of a lost art in the early days of the internet. Bookmarks are very important. Now, most people just type things into Google and find them that way. But uh, there is a benefit if you don't know how to, um, how to create a bookmark or what is a bookmark exactly in your browser. We've realized, surprised me just because I'm an old hand, but um, you know, it surprised me. But if you don't know how to do that, you can learn. Just type you know, Google, how do I create a bookmark uh, in my browser? Uh, and you will get the answer. And what that does is that you'll see it here. If I want to see admin updates, I have a bookmark here. And I just hit it once and the updates from the course team, um, uh, course team load. So my routine as a learner in Scholar is click on community. That takes me to my personal profile then go to communities. So when I do my daily check-in, this is what I'll do. If, if I haven't been able to connect for several days, I'll do the same thing. And then once I'm here, I go to updates and then filter activity and you know from admins. So uh, now let's get down to the business of what you actually need to get done. So my suggestion is to scroll all the way down, okay? It, so let's say you were joining the course today. Um, Here's what you would do. You would scroll all the way down, uh, just the updates from the course team. And you can see you know, one piece of advice is do not try to read everything, all right? So for example, the introductions. There are 263 people who introduce themselves in the community. That is amazing, that is wonderful. Do not try to read all of them, unless you have a lot of time on your hand. Read a couple, get a feel you know, for who is in the course, but really, you should only start reading the, the, the introductions from others once you have completed yours. And that is, of course, uh, you know, there's a reminder for you in the honor code and participation guidelines. Now, let's look at what these updates look like. So when you click everything, the little blue links tend to be very important. And some people completely miss them. So you know, another you know, tip, a top tip for a scholar is to pay attention to the little blue links. So the honor code you've seen before, and then you can go back and start scrolling up. Let's look at what you were to do in orientation day one. So here, um, you click on the orientation day one and wait, in some cases, you know, wait for it to load. Scholar is you know, an increasingly busy platform. Um, and here's an update. So what's an update? An update is a series of short tasks and instructions. So the structure of updates, you know, is consistent or we strive for consistency. Um, there are, you know, there's a line, all capitals, how many tasks you have to complete. Now, what do we mean by tasks? A task can be something that takes you 30 seconds to complete, but it's still a task. It's something discrete that you need to get done. It can be something as simple as view a video or, you know, read a text or download a file. Um, it can be much more elaborate. It can be a many tasks or many updates will end asking you to comment on something. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So 
the important thing about the updates is that um, we encourage you to really read them carefully. Some people skim through them, miss something, and then two weeks later realize that they're really behind and it's going to be they're going to struggle to catch up. So here you'll find a new update that contains you have here's some information about what to expect during orientation week. You're going to find a new update. There are welcome messages from the course team. There are tutorials to help you learn to use Scholar, and then other resources to guide you. So in this update for day one. You're going to meet the SMEs, so the lead SMEs, that is you know, uh, Carolina, Dale, and John. Um, you're going to learn to navigate the community in Scholar, and then you know, we allocate, we encourage, these are indicative. Some people would, will spend, the, you know, we'll do it in three minutes. Other people will spend, will take an hour to really carefully craft their own introduction. Um, so here, you, know, you walk your way, you work your way through the update, these little videos, we make them as short as we can, and we make them as compelling and useful as we can. So right now, this one is just a welcome message. But in some cases, um, for the weekly assignments, Carolina and Dale will be sharing their tips, their advice, and maybe you know give away a little, you know, some clues as to how to get that weekly assignment done. So those little videos are going to be really important. Um, some of you will just grab the week one assignment and just get it done. But for those of you who will work through it, feel overwhelmed, you're not sure how to go about it, you're going to find, you know, Dale and Carolina are going to be sharing, uh, explaining, walking you through, really holding your hand for those who need that in order to be able to get the work done. And the same goes for uh, John, um, who, you know, uh, who is working with, uh, Dale and Carolina. Um, he's just not based in Geneva uh, and not currently uh, visiting Europe as Dale uh, happens to be. So um, learning to navigate the community in Scholar is kind of what we're going over now. And so you can see here, Dale tells you why you would want to put up with a hassle. We know, you know, we, we hate increasingly, we have a few platforms we have to use, a few platforms like Facebook that some of us enjoy, and then learning anything else is really a, seen as a hassle. But um, there's some very powerful, compelling reasons for why learning to use this platform, learning its idiosyncrasies, learning the tips and tricks will actually give you you open up a new way to learn. So I heard somebody mention Coursera during the discussion group, and uh, this is a massive open online course platform that's absolutely amazing. There's some you know, uh, there's some great courses there, but a lot of them are about receiving information and then uh, demonstrating that you're able to recall that information. What we'll be doing in this course is very different. You're going to work each week on solving a problem, you know, um, and um, and that is, uh, you know, and that problem solving will be how you practice your skills and how you share with others. Um, Jaurès points out that if possible, download all these videos in order to watch them offline. And indeed, we'll be sharing the course resource folder soon. We're still, you know, getting it in order for the um, successive weekly assignments. And that course folder, you will we'll be able to find all of the videos that we'll be using in the course, um, and you'll be able to download them. You know, if you're in a place where you have cons constraints or bandwidth, or if you're in a place where um, you know, YouTube is blocked in uh, some countries. So uh, this is a tutorial where, in which I have recorded myself doing exactly what I'm doing now. So if you find it useful to have me here for 30 minutes, if you're finding these explanations useful, um, then definitely make a point of watching the video tutorials. They will make a huge difference. I, I do the same thing and it's just, it's a recording, but you can, that has benefits. You can stop, you can rewind, you can watch more than once. Here, I just have 30 minutes and then you go. Now, some of you may be feeling like I'm talking down to you. You may have already figured all this out and you're wondering why is he giving him this much explanation? I don't need all this. So that's fine too. Just think of the diversity that there is in the course. We're trying to accommodate everyone. So if you, if you just, you know, you just need to look at the instructions for 10 seconds and then you know what to do and you, anything you don't know, you'll figure it out. That is fine. You know, then we don't, you don't need to stay in the session. But if you really need the help and appreciate it, you know, we're here for you. And uh, in particular, Hannah Kade will be available 
um, pretty much 24-7 uh, when he's not in an operating room, he will be responding to your calls for help and he'll be making sure that um, you figure out how to use the platform. The same with the uh, scholar, uh, WHO scholar accompanists. Uh, they too will be on standby and we'll, you know, we're, figuring, we're still putting the finishing touches on exactly how they get in touch with you, how you get in touch with them, but they'll be making sure that you complete the assignments and that you're making good progress as you work through your creator project. So this is the day one update, um, and it ended with you know, um, asking you who you are, what you do, where you work, and how is this, you know, how is the topic of the course relevant to your work? And as you can see, many people you know, answered. So in order to find the slot where you can add your introduction, you need to scroll all the way down, all the way down. All right, there are many of them. Do not try to read all of them unless you're on vacation or something, and then you may have things to do with your family or um, preferable to, uh, to this. So here you find the comment box. And when you get down here, there you can introduce yourself. Now remember, there are four specific questions we want you to answer. So some people just get excited and put in a comment where they tell us they share a bunch of things, everything except responses to the questions we were interested in. But uh, during orientation week, that's okay. Uh, during the, you know, once the course starts on Monday, then we're really going to have you, need to have you focused on and responding to what we're asking. Um, so certification requirements are also important. That's where the business about the different tracks is explained. And then um, orientation day two and orientation day three, again, each, uh, each um, update is structured in the same way with a small task to complete. Um, for those of you, orientation day two, of course, is the introduction, the first pass of introduction um, to the manual. You'll find, um, you know, two more things I want to show you. One is the shares. So here on this side, you can see right now there are only two links. Uh, so click on view all. And this is on the right hand side in the blue column here. Um, you find the shares. Here right now, there are only two documents. We are carefully selecting and we'll be adding your know, links and downloads that you need for this course. So if you want to go to the reference manual, you click on the reference manual link. And here we have got actually, and you do not need to have Dropbox installed to use it. Um, here you have got each chapter of the manual split into a separate PDF, each annex in a separate PDF. Um, Dale has shared which chapters we're going to be focusing on in this module, and therefore we we'll encourage you to look at that. Uh, now, I want to end with by asking you about um, Creator or showing you a uh, creator. So some of you, you've heard the term creator project. What is that? You've been asking questions about how exactly peer review happens. So it happens in creator and creator is a completely separate environment from community. It's all in common ground scholar, but it's completely different. So here I've just dropped into creator and I actually have a piece of a project from a GRISP course um, because I can have many projects and many works um, in uh, scholar, you know, in my creator space. Creator is a private space. No one is going to see what you're doing there except for the course team. And we'll be looking in to give you advice and guidance and suggestions and maybe check in and say, how are you doing? It looks like you haven't, you know, you might want to make sure you have time carved out uh, to make progress. But this is where the magic of scholar really happens because in this feedback panel, and you don't need to actually worry, you won't be working in creator for, you know, um, uh, right away. But uh, this is where the peer review happens. And this is where you also get receive feedback from your peers that is anonymous, structured using a quality standard called the rubric. Um, and so there's a lot of complexity in there, but we'll be showing you, you know, no worries. We'll be showing you only the things that we actually need you to be able to do um, to properly use Creator. We will be going very fast in weeks five and six, working through uh, peer review especially. So uh, we're going to need you to watch those tutorials and pay attention to what uh, what needs to be done to work effectively in, um, uh, in Creator. So that's it uh, for today. I hope this session has been useful and that if I've missed any questions from the, um, uh, from the chat, I apologize for that. You can always reach me on WhatsApp afterwards uh, as well as, uh, or leave a comment in the community. Um, you know, the course team, the subject matter experts are 
you know, very mobilized, um, very dedicated to responding to you. So you know, if you have a question, if you're, and especially if you're suffering, do not suffer in silence. I'm going to give um, Hannah's uh, contact details. And then in addition to Hannah, um, in the coming days, we're going to be, you know, um, the um, WHO scholar accompanists are going to be, um, you know, getting ready to support you and to be there for you when you need them. And Jaurès, of course, is one of them. He, in fact, is a level four accompanist. So uh, the course team has specially invited him to share his subject matter expertise as well as uh, his willingness to support and engage with you uh, to encourage you to make it through this course. So I hope that is um, all uh, useful. Uh, to you. Thank you for having stayed um, for this uh, technical support session. Wishing you well and uh, see you in Scholar. Of course, the second uh, discussion group will be taking place tomorrow, but we're very excited and I hope that you're feeling the potential that is there um, with this course, both to progress yourself, your competencies, your career development, uh, your ability to contribute to immunization efforts uh, where you work, but also to connect with others and to really, you know, sort of reconnect with the vision and the purpose and the, you know, the reasons that got you into immunization in the first place. So having said that, I'm now going to unmute you all so we can say goodbye to each other. The remaining 51 participants look forward to um, um, engaging with you. In the yeah, thank, you. thank you. Take care. Thank you. I don't think we'll have a problem with the song down the front door. All right, goodbye, everybody. All right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.